there's almost this two-way relationship between the desire to return to the homeland, Punjab, but also realizing that Singapore is homeland. Being a third-generation Singaporean Sikh, I really could not identify with the um, storylines that were being passed down. These stories were um, based, um, you know, um, in the past, they were based out of Southeast Asia, mainly based in uh, India, and, and these were the stories that I actually grew up with. I was in search for the um, question of what it meant to be a Singaporean Sikh. Is there a, is there a narrative that I could find more relevant to this part of the world as opposed to the um, Indian story? When news about Bukit Brown first broke out that it was going to be demolished for a uh, eight-lane highway, um, me being a Punjabi Sikh wasn't too, too uh, concerned about it because it had nothing to do with the um, Sikh community. So I met Claire and the Bukit Brown volunteers a couple of years ago when um, images of the Sikh statue surfaced on social media. And that caught my attention because it was not just one Sikh statue that was discovered, but there were more than 30 pairs of them. When I first met Ish, I guess uh, he was, what he was very curious about was why were there Sikh gods as honour gods at Chinese graves? because that would imply that there's a great level of confidence placed in the Sikh gods in order to take them into the journey to the afterlife. The Sikhs represented the gods. Uh, one of them is meant to guard the tomb compound and the other one is meant to guard the deceased. You've got the Chinese deities that were meant to carry them into the afterlife and you've got other little symbolic elements that enable the, um, the um, deceased uh, soul to prosper in the afterlife. First time I encountered the Sikh gods, I was more fascinated by the detail. Some of them were in military gear, some were more like a jaga, uh, like literally a security guard. Uh, some of them carry symbols of the Sikhs, like the kirpan. But others carry the Lee Enfield rifle, which was in service under British colonial times. It just really surprised me how an unrelated place, a place that we were often warned as kids not to venture into, made me connect with my Sikh history. Every, every curl of the beard, every um, fold of the turban, is so real and looked so much like me. I felt at home being in this cemetery. Amongst all the statues in Bukit Brown, there's this particular pair that, that, that actually stands out and that's because it's the only one in Bukit Brown that's in color. In the case of Chiu Gyok Leong, they almost look like they were based on individuals that they could have known because no two pairs are the same. These people must have probably seen Sikh policemen being in active duty while they were alive in Singapore and they wanted to replicate this same sense of energy, this same sense of spirit and take it with them into the afterlife. Essentially, where you lived, where you immigrated to, and where you died, where you're, you've made your, your friends for life now and now in death as well, buried with them, that's your home. This was a most unexpected and most pleasant outcome. We were trying to promote and um, explain about Bukit Brown and raise awareness about it. And here was uh, Ish 
you know, outside of the Chinese diaspora, getting very interested and on his own, started studying the history of the Sikhs in Singapore and then he's launched this app. In fact, my Sikh heritage trail was actually primarily supposed to be on these Sikh statues. But I figured that there was actually a lot more to be discovered, there was a lot more to be unlocked. In my journey, while I was pouring through, through books in the archives, through all these old newspaper articles, I, I came across our very colourful Sikh police history in, in Singapore. And what struck out to me most was the Sikh police contingent that was set up by the uh, British administrators. met one of the descendants of the Sikh police officers. His name is Mr. Paramjit Singh. What I loved about his collection was that he uh, documented his family's history really well um, in terms of the um, photographic evidence. So when he contacted me, I was very keen to assist because uh, my father contributed in the Second World War as a volunteer and my grandfather was in the police. Our six of today, our youth especially, I feel they do not really know the role that our forefathers played in the economy and the defence of Singapore. From what I understand, the Padang in those days was a place that uh, major activities, events, ceremonies used to take place. Parades used to be taking place here. My grandfather, when he was out uh, at sea in the police, uh, a mother, a Chinese lady and her two children fell off the boat and he instinctively jumped off the boat and went in and saved their lives. So in recognition of that, the British commander of the day actually held a parade at the Padang here and uh, issued him with a, a certificate of appreciation. I have the certificate, we are keeping it as a family alone, it's a treasure. This is the certificate that he received. Uh, yep. See? From the uh, Duke of Connaught photograph of how the Sikhs used to dress up the police in those days. For them, every Sikh at that point in time must have a turban on his head. Yeah. Notice the shots and the... Singapore was actually segregated to the different racial groups and uh, the British actually looked up to the Sikhs to maintain some form of law and order. The, the general image of the Sikhs of those days was one of integrity and uh, protector of the people. They would be regarded as the people who you turn to when you needed help. I remember a story my father told me. His Malay colleague came to office and says, all of you be careful. Now, today I passed by a sing house. I smelt the ghee from the food. Today I feel very strong. So you must be careful of me today. <laughs> So in fact, we actually discovered that there was a handbook when it, when it came to actually recruiting Sikhs from the villages in Punjab, India. Sikhs had to be of a certain height, um, certain, a certain shape, their, their chest length had to be of a certain width, they had to keep their turbans, they had to keep their beards, um, keep their, their ceremonial daggers with them at all times as well. documented these um, visual markers of courage and of uh, loyalty, it definitely struck a chord with me because it reminded me what it meant to be a Sikh, what my forefathers fought very hard for. And going back even in time, it was also what the um, Sikh gurus um, established, that Sikhs were meant to be, to be um, protectors of the weak. Singapore's Sikh history, you find that the image of Sikhs as this fierce protector, warrior type persona was really tapped on. There's still the idea that Sikhs are strong and protectors, but there's also the idea that Sikhs are professionals, you know, they're well groomed, they're well mannered, they're educated, you know, it's people you want to be like. We were both interested in Sikh history and when we met we decided we should do more to document um, local Sikh history in Singapore. 
So we actually started really simply with maps, layout, and we just started plotting all the points that we know of. Uh, and then we read more about each point and learned about newer points. For me personally, having studied Sikh, the Sikh community in Singapore, gave me a lot of insights as to why like, the general Indian community was such and such way, or why the Tamils you know, had such and such ideas. Um, with her, we were actually able to connect memory and space and what these um, historical Sikh sites in Singapore signified. In a sense, she was the um, compass for this uh, project. It was interesting to see how it wasn't just in Bukit Brown where the Sikh image was used so strongly, but in random places like Katong Park or in shop houses in Belastia, where it's now the fresco of entrance to the shop house. I find that the Sikh diaspora in Singapore is particularly unique because of the, you know, the unique kind of mixes in Singapore. And the term Jaga itself comes from Malay. In Bahasa Melayu, it means to guard. So it's really cool how there's this exchange now between a language, taking the term from a language to now stand for a community. Through this journey was the concept of a shared heritage whereby it wasn't just about my heritage or it being about your heritage. You've got to appreciate Sikh culture through the lens of a um, shared heritage, right? It made me find a place in Singapore. It helped me understand what it meant to be a Sikh in Singapore, what it meant to be a Sikh in Southeast Asia. Okay, you say hi. Okay. <laughs> I like to think of our history as one of exchanges and interactions. So, you know, what we said about the Jaga, in, between the Malay and Sikh culture, the, the interactions between the Chinese and Sikh culture, um, it's in this everyday interactions I find that Singapore is made. It's not just the big man or the big events. And there's a lot of similarities. A lot of similarities in their cultures and our cultures. How their weddings are conducted, how our weddings are conducted, how you cut the ribbon, how you wait to collect money and angpao and haggle over money and all that. We are all immigrants. Um, whether our ancestors uh, came two, three generations ago, even further back, I think the impulse of any immigrant is a certain sadness, obviously, nostalgia for what is lost, but also the imperative to form a new home and a better life. So do not lose that spirit of self-preservation, of exploration. Go out there, search, and you might just discover an identity that connects all of us.